Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about overriding methods. I'm going to go and open up my browser here to javacjava.com. Click on the menu pop out, select Java OOP Tutorials. This is my object oriented programming tutorials page. I'm going to scroll down to the overriding methods tutorial. Now that we have a few concepts of inheritance under our belt, I will show you how, how you can override a method. Overriding methods is one, uh, another one of the really cool features of object oriented programming. It was necessary to learn a few things about inheritance because method overriding can only occur in a superclass subclass relationship. There will be situations where you extend a class and you want to modify the behavior of a method declaration in the superclass. How can we do that? Eh, we simply create a method in the subclass with the identical signature and return type. By default, when the method is invoked using an instance of an object, the method in the subclass will be the one that is executed. Okay, let's come down here. Actually, I'm going to go back up here and read this, right? This sentence one last time because I really want to reiterate this there. By default, when the method is invoked using an instance of an object, the method in the subclass will be the one that's executed. All right. It doesn't need to make sense yet, but it will make sense here in just a second. Let's go and highlight this code and hit Control C or right click and select copy. Let's move the browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the uh, command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one real quick by right clicking, going new, shortcut, CMD, next, and finish, right? It's just as easy as that. Let's go ahead and open up the command prompt, type in Java C, press enter. All this stuff will scroll by, and uh, you, that's a good thing. If you don't see this stuff scroll by and you get an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing a Java development kit. You'll need to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. Go ahead and type in cd space backslash. cd is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. Then type in make directory md java. I already have uh, a folder there, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Right? And then we'll change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make another directory, and I'm going to call this one uh, overriding methods. And we'll change directory to the overriding methods folder. And then I'm going to notepad overriding methods.java. Overriding methods.java is the name of our source code file there. And I'm going to hit Control V to paste this stuff in. It would file save. So in the overriding methods source code file, we have um, four classes. Let's start down here with the child class. And basically, well, actually, no, let's start with the grandparent class. So I changed my mind because it doesn't extend anything. Well, actually, it implicitly extends the object class, but I'll get into that in the next tutorial there. I've got this one simple method here called display message, right? And this is actually what's called an instance method. Um, you've heard me say instance variables a lot there too, but technically this is an instance me method there whenever we create an instance out of this object, which is what we're going to do. So anyway, i got display message with its name and its signature. There's no parameters here either, so its method signature is the name plus the parameters, and there are none. And then the return type right here is void. Okay, so this um, this method will simply display to the console the string literal here, invoking the method from the grandparent class. All right. Now, the next class we have kind of down the list here is parent, and it extends grandparent. And now what we've done is we've overridden the display message method. And the reason why we can tell it's overridden is because we have the exact same name and exact same parameter list, which is none, and the exact same return type all those things, as long as they're the same, is that this is an overridden uh, method. And we're just going to display to the console here, this string literal here, invoking the method from the parent class. All right, and then one more here, just to kind of drive the whole, whole idea home here. We've got the child, right? And it's extending the parent, right? And so we've got the same method being overridden here, the display message, same name same parameter list, same return type, so we're overriding it. 
and then go ahead and we're going to display it to the console and we're going to display the string literal invoking the method from the child class okay so coming up here to the overriding methods class the first thing we're going to do with our main, main method entry point is we're going to declare a reference variable c of child data type equal to a new instance of a child object right and of course this right here invokes the child uh, constructor which you'll notice there is no child constructor down here but if you're watching my constructor tutorials you know there's one a default constructor put in there implicitly okay now that we have our c reference variable pointing to an instance of a child object we're going to go ahead and say c dot and dot will invoke the display message um, method instance method specifically there all right, so what is it going to display first? Well, let me give you a big hint there. Let's come back to the website here and read this last sentence. By default, when the method is invoked using an instance of an object, the method in the subclass will be the one that is executed. All right, so by telling us that, we have C child, right? Child is the subclass, parent is the superclass. So we know this one won't be the one that it invokes because it's going to, by default, invoke the one in the subclass, which is the child here, right? So it'll go ahead and display this. Now, in our next object we create up here, uh, P, right, a reference to a parent object, parent instance, uh, a reference to the instance of a parent object, we're going to invoke the display message um, method there. So which one is it going to print? Well, by default, it'll print the um, subclass one here. Now, parent is the subclass of grandparent because we're extending grandparent here. So don't mistake that because parent was the, the super class of child, parent in this particular case, when we create a new parent here, it's the subclass of grandparent, right? Subclass is always on the left of extends. Super class is always on the right subclass on the left, superclass on the right. The method in the subclass will always be displayed by default. Okay, so it'll display invoking the method from the parent class. Now the last object, um, last reference to the instance of an, a grandparent object that we create here, we invoke the display message once again. And so it comes out here and it basically is going to display this one because grandparent is technically the subclass of the superclass object. I could actually type, you know, extends object in here because that's really what's implicitly put in there. As a matter of fact, why not? Let's go ahead and just save this out and let's run this. Well, compile it, run it, clear the screen, Java C, overriding methods, Java, hit tab, there we go, that's the one I'm looking for, strip that off and let's run it. So we get exactly what we expected. Invoking the method from the child class, right? Invoking the method from the parent class. Invoking the method from the grandparent class. Okay, so that, uh, that's a really kind of gives you a good you know, solid introduction to overriding methods there. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. Close out of that. And I'll just leave you with a quick final thought there. Um, on the surface, the base, this very basic example makes it seem like overriding methods is a really uh, simple concept. In reality, the rules of overriding a method are actually quite complex, as you will discover in future tutorials. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.